you see an alkene, what is one of the mechanisms that comes to mind? What is something that you can do to that alkene? Anything in chapter six. Anything in chapter six. Okay, it's a good place. I think one of the first ones you learned was um, hydrogen halide. Hide. Yes, yeah. addition of a hydrogen halide. So let's add, my favorite is HBr. So let's add that. What, does she, is she wanting me to know solvents or is it okay to just say uh, HBr? Some we know solvents and some we don't. Okay, I feel like HBr usually you don't have to. You don't. Okay. So, what would it make in this case? It would make a two bromo and propyl. Propane. Okay. So, are you saying the bromine would add here? Yeah. To more it. substituted. Good. And obviously, the hydrogen is here now. Okay. Good. What's something else you learned? Uh, you can add water to dehydrate and make an alcohol. So you're saying add just H2O? Um, maybe. This is where I'm going to get confused. Or is it H2SO4? And heat, I don't remember. What are you, what are you trying to make? An alcohol. Okay. So if we were to add dilute, so like, yeah, we could add H2SO4 and water, or dilute H2SO4. Yeah. Then the proton from the strong acid could um, be grabbed by this double bond, so it'd be here. And then water could come in and attach to this carbon and then be deprotonated by the conjugate base of sulfuric acid. Mm -hmm. So then you'd be left with a, with a alcohol or a hydroxyl group right there. Does that make sense? Yep. Okay. Well, while we're talking about alcohols, how would you get, because that follows Markovnikov's rule, right? Yeah. How would you get an alcohol on anti-Markovnikov's rule? Uh, is that the halohydrin? Not quite. It's uh, deboration. Yes, hydroboration, oxidation. Hydroboration, oxidation. So it's like a two-step thing. The first, first set, or first, yeah, set of reagents is does the hydroboration. The second step, or second set of reagents does the oxidation. So what is the first group of reagents that we'll put in? DH three and T, T something something. THF. THF. Yeah. Tetrahydrofuran. I don't I thought you don't need to know that really, just THF. But. Okay, and two. It's a uh, parot dioxide, was it? H H2O2? Yeah, you can do H2O2, you can do any peroxide, so I just abbreviate it R O O R because the R's can be H's, they can be Whatever, just any kind of peroxide. And then a base. Good. So like sodium hydroxide? Okay, good. Strong base. Strong so base. that's the solvent, and what's on top? Um, that's not the solvent. This is the one and the two means you put in these reagents for the first step. Then you put in these. You don't put all of them in at the same time. Oh, I see. <clears throat> a lot of times it means like it's either one set of reagents followed by a second set, or it's one set of reagents, then you like uh, change, put it in a different solution, and then add the second set. But it's just it's showing there's a division. So okay. I mean, if we broke it out, we could show what happens after the first step, what it would look like, and then the second step. But it's this. It's kind of nice just to put it over and under. Oh, so where would the alcohol be? Let's finish this one. Primary carbon. Good. Or propen one all. Yeah. Good. What other mechanisms did you guys see? Off an alkene. Sorry, what? Off an alkene. Yep. You can make a bisphenol dihalide. <clears throat> okay. 
How do you do that? Uh, you add a diatomic. BRT or CLT. Okay. And it adds its anti Markovnikov. Okay, so we would have is it anti Markovnikov or anti addition? I don't remember. I think it might be anti addition. Yeah, because in this case, I mean, it is. It's anti addition. Okay. So um, that just means. Adds to an alkene to form vicinal dihalite. Yeah, so vicinal means neighboring. Mm -hmm. And it adds anti, if, say this was a ring, then the ring would still be locked in a configuration. Like, this one is free to just rotate wherever, so I draw it that one's coming towards me, one's going away, even though in reality it's spinning, so I, I don't really know. But if it was a ring structure, they would be locked in a configuration. It's just showing these add anti to one another. Because if you go through the mechanism, we can go through it too later. Um, you're going to reach out with the pi bond, grab one of the bromines. It's going to break the bond to the other bromine. That bromine is going to come around and attack from the back side. Oh, yeah. She showed sense. us that yesterday because they're so big, too. It has to be anti. Yeah. So that's why it's. I draw it this way just to remind myself it's anti. So that in a situation where you can actually tell whether it's anti or not, like if it was in a ring structure and this this all happened, then you'd know that they're on opposite sides of the ring. Mm -hmm. But in this case it's free to spin, so it's more of a reminder. And that's one two pro oh no. One two dibromo propane, right? That's it. Mm -hmm. Good.